Hello everybody, Gerald MLD here. Please, if you will, like and subscribe. And this video is about all the little news topics that dotted the month of March. How Xbox is really setting themselves up for a major summer showcase by getting all these little things out of the way. And then, coincidentally, you got Sony that are doing all these little missteps this month. So it really, Xbox really comes out on top and uh, this is just my take on it. So, I mean, first off, you got uh, things like the Avengers situation with uh, the dumb delivery. Uh, at first, people didn't really think smart delivery was anything special. Microsoft announces it, and people are like, who cares? But now, people are seeing the value in smart delivery, because PS5 has dumb delivery. You have all these little hoops to jump through with the Avengers PS4 to PS5 uh, migration. It just should not be this complicated. With Xbox, it just works. And this is just, it's fantastic news. I mean, it's little things like this that I take for granted because I have no idea that it's really inconvenient for other people on the other platforms. And I think over the months, you're going to see little things like this where Xbox just does the software engineering things side of things just a little bit better. And these things will add up. So I just found this to be very fascinating because there's been examples of this at launch and now you got this one. It's going to keep happening until Sony gets their act together. So... Eh, I, thought, I, th I thought that was very amusing. But I think what's uh, important now is tomorrow. You got Outriders. Day one Game Pass. And this is the first time a third party uh, a new game was day one on Game Pass. I don't know how Microsoft got it, but they got it. And it just really, it's good value for us. But compared to them on PlayStation, it is an act of financial stupidity to buy this game day one on PlayStation. When you got us, who just play the game, you know, day one, 15 bucks a month. But it's not like we're paying 15 bucks a month for one game. We are paying 15 bucks a month to play all the games we want in addition to Outriders. You see, traditionally, in, in all the gaming past, the idea was if you want a new game, you spend full price day one to play it. And that's true now. It's an option. But with Xbox now, you have, you have Game Pass being a disruptive uh, model in the, in the industry. People are starting to question this now. I mean, why spend full price for one game when you could just pay a small monthly fee to get as many games as you want, also day one? And this will be very evident when the first party hits start to drop, like Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon 5, Starfield, you know, games like that. So I hope Outriders, this is, uh, I, hope, I hope it's very successful so that we can have more things like it and Game Pass can continue to uh, differentiate itself and show its value to people who aren't currently subscribed to it. So I'm looking forward to this and seeing how the, what the numbers are for Outriders once it launches. But then you got the little things that happened this month, like Sony buying Evo. Like to this, after some weeks now of uh, looking, at, looking at, I have no idea why they did this. I mean, you, you, coming off uh, Microsoft buying Bethesda, which was a huge acquisition, and then Sony comes back with this, like, come on. It's like, give, their, give your fans something to talk about. It's just like Sony decided to buy anything. See, it's weird. PS4 had a lot of Japanese exclusive fighting games. Like, we all know this. But yet, so what does Sony have to prove? And yet, they have no first-party fighting game of their own. I mean, you have PlayStation Battle Royale, but that game flopped on the PS3. And you have things like Halo Infinite having its own esports scene. But that doesn't mean Microsoft has to buy an esports tournament organizer, organization to do that. I mean, you just have an esports thing. So it's just really, really weird. But then you got Microsoft being in talks to get Discord for $10 billion, which, by the way, Discord approached Microsoft. And this, at the very least, has some gaming applications. Yes, it's a lot of cloud revenue. Yes, it's a massive, massive gaming community. But also, if you integrate it into uh, Xbox chat... Even if you make Discord Nitro a permanent free addition to Game Pass Ultimate, that is a win right there. There is no two ways about it. At least what Microsoft is doing for gaming actually has relevance. And they have the money to buy these things. Where Sony was only like, what, a joint buyer in the Evo purchase. Like, come on, Sony, come on. And I think the fans are starting to really see just how little money Sony has to play with compared to Microsoft. Now that Xbox and Microsoft are both very, very serious about what they do in gaming. So we'll see about that. But overall, I think the point of March was that Xbox is give, giving to us 
whereas PlayStation takes away. Case in point, this month, Sony has announced a lot of closures of services. Like, you got their uh, communities service. I don't know what that is, but it's going. Then you got uh, the web browser. The TV movie store is gone, which is weird because Sony is a TV movie company, but okay. And then overall, the PS3, Vita, and PSP stores. These are all little things in the grand scheme. I get that. But it's, it's the principle. It's a symbol that... Even though PS4 was very, very successful, Sony is apparently cost-cutting in all these little ways to save money where they can. It's just weird. Why? Well, why? They want to spend more, save more money so they can give more third-party uh, bags of money to get new deals? Like, I don't get it. Like, these are like little things. Whereas Xbox is retaining all of that. I mean, quite the opposite. We got a lot of Game Pass games in March, including 20 Bethesda titles. So, and then you got things like the frame rate boost, which is enhancing on top of preserving our gaming history. And then you got, B uh, this news happened today actually, I heard. BC games, backwards compatible games, are coming to xCloud. Uh, things like uh, Morrowind, Oblivion, Fallout New Vegas. Like, that's fantastic. The more the merrier. xCloud is still in beta mode, and it's already shaped up to be much better than Stadia or Luna combined. So... A lot of great things happening this year, but oh, that's that's really the idea here. Xbox just kept kept announcing thing, uh, things, and Sony they kept taking things, and that will be a common theme going forward. For some reason, Sony's just pinching pinching pennies here, and Xbox they're just uh, spending the money like, like, like there's no tomorrow. It, it, it's a great time. I ha I am a happy camper right now, but uh, then you got the indie showcase, and this is good. It shows Xbox is uh, once again committed to the indie scene. Games that I would personally like, I would play The Ascent, Exomecha, uh, Soccer 2, of course, and uh, let's see, Second Second Extinction. That looks like just mindless fun. So it's good that they did that. It was a long show. I didn't watch it, of course. You get the recap. I, I mean, I didn't have time for that. But it's good that they showed, what, 20 games coming to Xbox. And good, get this out of the way and let the summer showcase come. Get that one-two uh, punch with Bethesda first, Xbox second. Show us all those 23 studios and uh, what they're making. This is a perfect, perfect setup. Xbox marketing is on point. So, with that said, it's been a good month. And let's see what April brings. But overall, Xbox is in a fantastic position. So, that's it. See you guys.